Hello everyone, welcome back. We're here now with game number two. We've uh, obviously hearing some of these audio complaints and we're gonna perhaps look to fix things here for game number two. Uh, we might just have to not use our uh, live studio feed coming in from Kiev and pop on in-game ourselves uh, if the audio is gonna keep up this one. I'm gonna actually let him know. I feel like that's a, a good first step. Dream Protector and Phoenix is a good duo that is likely to be picked, and sure enough, it is by Navi. So they are trying to get a uh, a power duo of their own to match the Wind Ranger Magnus, because of course Team Empire. <laughs> I mean, I said they are willing to pick it up almost any game if they if they felt like you know if they felt up to it win or lose, and they just stomped that last game, so yeah. might as well just keep the train going. And uh, we'll see, like, Train Protector, I think, is one of the harder uh, supports to play against for aggro offlanes. So maybe the Train Protector will be able to win this lane, and then they're going to get some sort of Phoenix duel. Um, we saw Phoenix and Chaos Knight being run by both TFT as well as Alliance. Um, but then I think there's a lot of different Phoenix aggro duels that work pretty well. So. Yeah, we've seen quite a few different partners for the Phoenix in that offlane. These kind of aggressive heroes that can benefit a lot from the support of like the Phoenix Fire Spirits and all that. All right now, Navi know what's kind of coming their way as far as that safe lane goes. I don't imagine we'll see another Drow into the Magnus Windranger, although I'm not too sure what fares better. I would think maybe something like a a Necrophos type hero that just wins lanes, but he's banned out. Um, Weaver maybe, but he's also banned out now. So a lot of those strong laning heroes are no longer options. They certainly don't want something that's so susceptible to getting run over like the Draw Ranger was. Yeah, that's, the side Drow was like the yeah, that was... going way too far in that 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 direction. Or maybe you consider sending your kind of pseudo offlaner there and whatever, Chris sent, put Crystallize in the offlane to farm a bit better. Yeah, swap the lanes. Put like Centaur or something in that lane. Oracle. Hmm. Purge off Fire Spirits if you want to try and kill the egg. Oracle himself has pretty good attack speed as far as being able to kill an egg. Not that I feel like you're picking him up as the egg killer. I uh, can purge off the tree and overgrowth and all that as well, so some useful things, but also maybe a sign of something they want to be picking up uh, with their draft. What hero is that, though? Because Huskar does not like Tree and Protector. He destroys Phoenix, but he hates Tree and Protector. Um, Slark isn't really much of a hero. And then none of the other heroes in Dota really combo so well with Oracle that they're worth picking. Just curious. I just don't like. I don't feel strong enough against what's left, and I don't feel there's a hero Ten to combo seconds. with that is like so um, such an amazing duo that it's worth going for. Five seconds. Left. Yeah, maybe maybe it's like a personal preference thing for the support player. It's just like really what like announcer powerful. is that? Is that the meepo it's announcer? Meepo. Yeah. You have the meepo announcer. You don't like the meepo announcer? Isn't that kind of a? His voice is just kind of annoying. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you know, uh, that's the point, maybe. Is I annoy myself and. I don't know. Dota's not <laughs> to meant remind to be you that, that Dota is pain and suffering. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to follow someone's example and put my coffee on this notepad, which is already covered in tea stains. <laughs> hey, Klinks is a hero that can. Uh, he also has an ability that he turns on uh, against projectiles. Just like Wind Ranger, but Wind Ranger does. you can still purge off Strafe with Fortune's End, right? That is not destroying I believe. Pick. Dragon Knight. I assume so. It's kind of like an AOE purge. Yeah. So. That those AOE ones normally don't get dodged by Strafe. We were testing like all the interactions at TI when Clinks was getting started getting picked. Mm, we were just yeah. sitting there on our laptops, like, all right, let's you know test the Sven stuff. Let's test these things. Let's test toss. Like there's all kinds of ten ones. seconds. Um, but yeah, we're we're gonna use um, the in game. I gotta do some observer. Five right? seconds. What, left. Are, what are the observer settings? I Good need? luck. Camera speed. I want that low. I believe. Camera.
camera. Do you want camera decel high or low? I always forget. I think it's high. The speed at which. I pretty much only just turn on smooth drag. Yeah, I was about to say That's smooth all drag is all that matters. Uh, and make sure, yeah. Right. You know, you, you, uh, like, you know that I have actually, at a point, I was <laughs> observing so much for Join Dota, and I hated switching back and forth so much, and I didn't want to have like a config setup or whatever, that I, I just turned on smooth drag, and I had a relatively low camera speed, and that's also what I played with. I just played with the same observer settings. And now I'm just used to it. Now I play Dota and it's super smooth. But it also means I don't get like that very efficient Dyer's jerky movement yeah, yeah. when I'm Templar playing. Templar Assassin. So what do we got? TA coming Why out TA? of the with the clink. Two single target right clickers. I feel like there's a lot of overlap between what these heroes bring to the table. And they just picked up Dragonite. Yeah, it's is TA good against these heroes? I would argue no. If I was looking at this draft, I would think it, was, it went clinks then Oracle, then Templar Assassin, then Dragonite. Yeah, because Oracle has a direct counter spell to Clinks and DK kind of to TA in some ways. Yeah, I mean, Five you just double down left. on on uh, single target physical damage dealers against a, a DK, so... It seems a bit odd. I would definitely agree on that. Is Emperor a team that's been running DK mid, do you know? Or are they just standard uh, DK? I don't think so. So side lane DK, I guess, I mean, it's could be a, a band now. I, I honestly, position. there was one Dragonite game, and it was an Empire, but I don't know who it was. Okay. Let's see if we can get some of these necessary overlays. Ten well, seconds. It's a nice, uh, relatively early Radiant BKB hero to, to be able to deal with the egg as well. Well, there's a lot of damage threats. The last ban, the Huskar. Uh, maybe that's part of the reason they were double damning, downing on the Clinks and Templar Assassin. But I feel like that that was just um, a red herring that Dire they just pick. chased out. Broom they did not Buster. need to focus so much on whatever the supposed Oracle duo was going to be. Because I don't think it was necessarily a good Huskar game from the train protector is kind of annoying but then once you get the clinks i think it's no longer a huskar game and then you get the ta as well and brewmaster and then they ban it well does the ta not make it a better huskar game because you've got that lane that you can crush like i feel like yeah. huskar thrives in those scenarios where there's like Five a storm or a ta left. mid that he just dumpsters in lane uh, yeah i would definitely say the laning phase is favorable for him but i think it's like the the fact that ta always recovers off of ancients and then just becomes a, a blink deso hitter on a Huskar, and he's receiving burst physical damage is oh, yeah. something that a Huskar hates. Absolutely. Okay, good job. This so, is where you choose your hero. Bit of a forgotten carry in some ways, but yeah. he's what makes him good here. He's melee against Clinks, TA. I feel like you want something that's going to get up in their face, particularly the Clinks. You can't pick another ranged core against. One of the heroes that can kind of deal with Brewmaster. Not amazingly so, but you kind of deal with them. Uh, I think they really like the fact that it just gets on top of Clinks. It just kills him. As long as you have the detection, you just Omni Slash on top of him. He can't strafe. He can't win walk, run away. All right, guys. Let me know in the chat if audio sounds okay. Because we swapped over to uh, being in-game. So if audio is too loud, I can adjust. But... It is on a, a bit of a delay, so I'll keep an eye on it. Odium played a Dragon Knight. Five seconds left. Um, and they picked it into Weaver, Chaos Knight, and Alchemist. And that 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 uh, that looked very good. And it was also versus a Phoenix, which again I think Dragon Knight's relatively good against. So I think those were all smart choices um, here. Again, I think the the Dragonite fits, so he is definitely still a situational, switch, situationally available mid because he still scales later into the game, um, which I think is kind of preferred. Again, right now you want these sort of one, two, and three positions that are going to be able to do either win their laning phase or do okay, and if they only do okay, they're going to recover into a very strong mid game, and then they don't fall off super hard going late game. It's kind of this meta where, if, yeah, one of your cores has a bad time. It doesn't matter as long as the other two are doing okay. Whereas in the past, if your safe laner's losing his lane, you just lost the game off of that a lot of the time. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and it's here that he's going to have Empower, so he's going to be able to get that extra bit of free damage, even in range form without the cleave. It's still very handy, and hey, he's got AoE there regardless, so he's always going to be cleaving or splashing in some way. Maybe Empire isn't one-dimensional. Maybe they're just establishing a, a very, very strong, incredible threat where they're like, if you let us get Magnus and we're going to get some sort of Wind Ranger or some other support that benefits off of it, then we have all these other carries that we can play with this Magnus duo. Yes. So they've shown Troll. They've shown Juggernaut now. They've shown, what was the other hero? Animage. I mean, Animage and Juggernaut are both like some pretty forgotten heroes in this meta. Yeah, that Animage, I felt like, was just kind of unplayable almost in a way. Yeah. But apparently they still think it works, so... Uh, I believe they picked it into an Arc Warden, which okay. is... They, we've seen that twice now in this tournament, that uh, an Arc Warden has been picked up and teamed to try to counter it with Animage. How do I get the Smooth Drag on? I've got, uh... uh not what I want. I've got this on, but it's still... When I click down my middle button, it doesn't Smooth Drag. I guess it does this. This is smooth. This. That's smooth enough. 30 seconds to showtime! This is not going to be any oh, I see lots of good weapons, pimp buckle, scriff level observing, guys. I believe in you, gods. I believe that you can do anything you put your mind to. So it means if you fail, it means you're just not trying hard enough. Oh, that's, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a failure, I'm just not trying. <laughs> Looks like they are putting all their efforts into the top rune, says Empire have already invaded. Uh, you suggested. Very early on against this Magnus Wind Ranger, you said, "What if you just take your offlane type hero and plant him there?" And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to plant the Brewmaster in this lane. They're going to actually aggro tri lane to start. Now, I don't know if they actually will like it, when Phoenix goes down to the bottom lane, if ever. Um, I' I'm not sure, but. For the start, at least, the solo Brewmaster should be able to do pretty well. Yeah, I imagine both supports are just like, I don't want to lane against this, because Phoenix, no armor, Treant, no armor. Yep. These are heroes that just do not want to play against right-clickers. So this, to me, is almost somewhat both of them saying, I don't want to be there. Uh, with that said, Sinico does TP down and is going to look to secure the lane a bit, because they're ultimately, to some extent, you don't really want to go for this tri-lane if you're not going to be getting kills out of it. So I told Purge about this. I told Purge about the counter to tree and protector. Pick up a Quelling Blade and immediately run to your lane and start cutting down all the trees. Yep. And every single time I brought that up, the carry did not do it, so he did not get to see the effectiveness of it. But it just sucks. Look at Chu. All Chappie knows exactly where he needs to be able to play. Just plays the right-hand side, and Chu can't ever get there with the big entangle hit, which is really what wins lanes. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of... Dream play. I mean, I was at Dream League, and most people were doing the Quelling Blades, or they would have some hero that chopped down trees. There was a mid Lena that got LSA level one, went to the side lane, <laughs> broke all the trees, uh -huh. went back to Fountain to heal, and then went mid. And was we, had, like, we had a support Lena do that as well yeah. on, on ours. And it's like, okay, that, that ruins Treant's early game a bit. Uh -huh. One of the Treants actually got zero points in Nature's Guise and went like a 0 2 1 build because of it. And I'm just like, I guess that's what you do when you have no trees. I, I think that's absolutely what you should do. Is I mean, after all, like, uh, OG was experimenting with the 044 built, and it worked out uh, a bit. So, with, faced with adversity like that, probably just need to uh, change things up. So, our mid lane is going to be the Maiden Oracle helping Juggernaut. Yeah, that's not perhaps the lanes we expected. I mean, Jug Blaker, you can break the refraction pretty easily, and you've got a setup for it with the Fortune's End, which seems like the idea is that this is just going to be the best place to get Jugs and Farm. DK playing in the safe lane. Chappie taking a lot of damage up here. Won't go down. Does have a salve, which will get back to safety to pop. So not the DK mid that we perhaps expected. I don't think TA crushes DK by any means, but perhaps they just feel like this dual lane has some good kill potential. Yeah. Which, so far, not totally been shown, but they are doing well in terms of the CS and farm advantage. Okay, so Maiden earlier, I, I saw him do this and I've just been walk, watching him like a hawk. He's just purifying flames. Magical. And I was just like, what? He didn't purge it off. He just literally just healed. Magical. 
Yeah. So I wasn't sure if he just doesn't know what he's doing or something, but now he he did do the purifying flames into okay. the purge off of Fortune's End. Fortunately, you can't get a refraction, refraction, but that lockdown into the spin, as you said, is enough to be able to get a kill. Nicely done. The refraction didn't have the mana for it, and even if he did, it may have just been uh, burned through pretty easily with Blade Fury. So they get this early first blood on the mid lane. Magical was kind of struggling to sustain himself there anyways, and despite being a 2v1 lane, Jug and TA pretty similar in levels. TA only half a level ahead. Definitely a good sign that this mid lane is going according to plan for Empire. Going according to plan perhaps is the bottom lane, where Brewmaster Phoenix have perhaps found some better luck this game against that Magnus dual lane. Yeah, I like the fact that I don't think Blizzy would be able to survive for long uh, alone in this lane as they would bring the lane, the creep <laughs> equilibrium back and as they start eating through his regen, um, he would be pretty hard pressed to sit here. So I'm glad they brought the Phoenix down here eventually and it seems like they do actually have some kill power if they get the right kind of thunderclap off of uh, an Icarus dive. So. At least Navi is able to pull out the, the W there, as well as the top lane, even if mid is going pretty badly for Magical, who's currently sitting at only 13 CS. And normally, I feel like if there's a hero to shut down, TA is always a good one, because that's she's the one that's going to hit those early game item timings and kind of snowball, more so than the Clinks or... Oh, say he was dead again at the bottom lane. Yeah. I'm not sure. It, it looks like he got hit by the clap. And then I saw the Icarus dive afterwards. So I'm not sure how he keeps on getting in range of Blizzy. Uh, He's got no points in win run, which is... What? I would say a bit unexpected. That is really weird. I don't... I mean, obviously, to some extent, it must be intentional. Because if you you know forget at level 1, level 2, you'd remember at level 3, I would think. So he must have just made this decision to go for this... I build, which I would say is co kind of costing him. Yes. He's... He's died twice. Is... Definitely the reason he is dying, because he just cannot run the, the Brewmaster. Gets hit by Clap, probably gets hit by a big crit from him as well, and that's most of his HP, so. That is uh, concerning for Seiyu. Back in mid lane, Oracle and Jug, both level 4 now. We'll see if they can find any kill opportunities. Right now they're taking quite a lot of harass. Also got a healing ward, Kuman. Maybe trying to bait this healing ward down. They're going to go in here. Blade Fury is there. No mana for a refraction. And they're going to chase him down once more. Kuman getting brought low, but he's got the healing ward. Great use of the healing ward to dive the tower. That keeps him healthy enough to stay alive. It is nice that they're killing the Templar Assassin and keeping her CS low. What they do need to do, they need to make sure that she's not able to utilize Ancients just yet. But the side lanes have their hands full, so no one's actually stacking for her. Uh, but again, they just should try and get some aggressive vision starting around like 10, 11 minutes is usually when Templar Assassins try and clear through a stack. Yep. Magical may just default to doing some jungling if this lane continues to, to be so hard for him. Yeah, I don't feel like it gets much easier as Jug Oracle get levels. They're level 5 now, so level 3 Blade Fury, much lower cooldown. A lot of damage coming out from this one, and he's going to go in again. He's going to be diving the tower. He doesn't have mana for a healing ward. Yeah, he actually backs off. He probably could have gotten that kill, I want to say, but it would have likely cost him his life. And Magical's actually chasing him, looking for the kill on the Jug. Won't be able to find the trap land, though, as he did place on the high ground, and Jug ran to the river because of that. So Kuman, without the sustain, did not want to pay for that kill with his life, and may have even not gotten the kill if there was another refraction cast. If I'm totally honest, I'm not super impressed with the way that Maiden is executing on his Oracle. Okay. Watch, see if Chappy lives. Yeah, the damage mitigation under the Clinks helping him out. One more arrow with the Orb of Venom slow. He's got it. Brings him down just barely, but you take those. Yeah, certainly. TA back in the jungle like you suggested. All across the board. Navi favored laning stage so far, despite the woes they've had in this mid lane. The other two side lanes are both going quite well for them. And even the mid lane, the TA is even on last hits with Jug. Some of that being jungle creeps, of course. So part of the combination you want to do is like, first of all, Main needs to never just throw out his E without following it up with his Q. And he needs to not hit refraction, 
right? Because it's just like you're just taking away an instant. You might as well just right click at that point. Yeah. Um, but also, what he really should do is when they're leading off on this kills, he should just start off with Fortune's End when he comes in from behind like that and E after the Fortune's End. So that way, the, the it, you do the Purifying Flames and then the Fortune's End projectile lands. And that's also going to be at the point where your Jug will have run down the, the T8 with his spin and burned through all those refraction charges. So you can go Q, E, and then a secondary E to be able to finish off the TI. I feel like right in like a couple instances now, he's been like a bit inefficient in his mana usage. And they could be stifling this Templar Assassin even more. Look at her now. She's 36 and 10. She's caught up with the, the, uh, the Juggernaut, basically. Yep. Net worth wise, a bit of a difference, but last hits definitely show that Magical is not getting completely removed from this game. He's having a better time than the DK, who's receiving similar dual lane pressure treatment, but then you see a TA with a good 500 net worth ahead, and Navi as a whole with a lane stage advantage, and you've got to feel like this is actually okay for them. Yep. Another kill attempt on top. Chappie going for the TP out. It's going to be close. He's not going to make it, and that means he's going to respawn without a TP. Even more devastating as the Soul Ring on Clink's giving him the mana to support this constant aggression. It's funny how, like, that's kind of a, a smart play. It's just not quite good enough, right? He's like, how do I survive through this? Well, next time they get a bonk on me, and, and I'll just TP instantly. But they're still... At this point, Crystallize is level 7. He's got level 3 Searing Arrows. You can't actually bring that damage down any further. So the Searing Arrows are just hitting for full. Maybe they need to bring the Oracle up here. He can disarm Crystallize. Uh, he really can't do anything. It doesn't really seem like he's stopping the Templar Assassin anymore. Right? Yeah. He's like kind of hovering around this area. I think he's maybe doing some stacking and stuff. But I don't think you can let your Dragonite be shut down this much. It's a pretty hard kill to get on the TA as well with the refraction. Like you can't rely on the Omni Slash too much. Even if you burn it down, the, the second recast of it can always catch you by surprise. So. Yeah. It does feel like they may be better off leaving Kumin alone, but at the same time, he's going to actually start struggling to farm in this matchup against uh, the TA without the support. So it does feel like a bit of a laning weakness in this Empire side. Bottom lane, looks like they went on the Brewmaster attempting a kill. He's going to use the Primal Split to stay alive and look to turn this around on the Windranger. Windrun is there to get out, as the spell was already used to break the Yules, but meant there was nothing to purge off the Windrun. Stay in this lane for now. Has some bottle charges. Maidens rotated in as well. Once the Phoenix does have a dive though, and he's just going to turn around. Drops on fire spirit with the dive damage, and the slow maiden just pays for this with his life. Even with the two man shackle shot, nothing Empire can really do here. in trouble. Which one dire again? With Crystallize taking this top tower so early, he could start playing in the Radiant Jungle, taking advantage of his ultimate, and it's actually forcing. Jug seems to want to go up to that top lane. He can't clear stacks right now. I mean, I don't think he should just because it's giving Templar Assassin so much free time to hit the mid-tier one tower. And giving up your mid-tower for free, especially when there's already a Klinks who's taking your safe lane tower, you'll lose all control of your jungle areas. Well, we are starting to see Navi take control of this map. Crystallize the perfect hero to come in and contest some of this jungle. Does scout the Jug out, doesn't go for the kill immediately. May wait for this big camp so he has something to help tank the Omni Slash. Well, it looks like Kuminus is going to fall back in mid. Yeah. yeah, magical. Well, for all the woes he had in lane, he is doing just fine right about now. Maybe similar, not so similar story for the DK. In fact, Chappie is still mega struggling. Yeah, Oracle tries to be the one to stand in front of that tower, but the creeps run at him. So he runs out of tower range, but the thing is TA already had a trap set behind the tower. And then he plays off of a creep that is low, and he denies the creep and side blades damage onto Oracle and then chases him down after the trap's low as well. I like this from Crystallize. He's going to go join up with that TA you're talking about and take the tier one mid tower, making sure it's not denied. Blizzy at bottom, kicks down the Poshka, thought about Nappy, thought better of it, decided to hold the cooldown as he'll pay for this life. So Nico, okay, could have been close with the power shot, but does still stay alive. and. Navi finding kills in multiple lanes, towers in several as well. Things just continue to go well as Crystallized Main. You guys are not teammates, you're allowed to hit each other. He pops the strafe, but he's already being disarmed, so not a whole lot will come from Crystallize's rotation and scouting out the Oracle. Next time they run into Maybe each other, under they're likely going to die just because Crystallize almost finished up that Diffusal Blade already. 
It's going to be tough for almost every single hero in this Empire lineup. These two teams look entirely different. Like, Na'Vi is looking really crisp and clean with their rotations. Sineko coming down to the bottom lane, getting some kills. All their laning phase decisions have been really on point. Even Magical making this kind of comeback after a rough start is great to see. And Empire just falling apart. Yeah, it doesn't feel like... Like mega outdraft or anything, just seems like you know these pickoffs are happening that shouldn't be in a way. The way they laned it, maybe giving the DK this terrible lane is also kind of uh, being punished. But like, Poshius has gone down in this bottom lane, died twice in a row. Um, and this dual lane of Navi is Blizzy with the help of the Phoenix just crushed this hard to beat Magnus Windranger duo that we saw dominate so much last game. But this time around, they just had a much better answer to it. They spent a lot of time thinking about their last pickup mid or bottom lane. Okay, again they gone on. I'm not sure if he dodged that with the strafe, but whatever happened when we were down there, Clinks was strafing away to bring down the DK, so he may have actually used that as a way of dodging. Phoenix who's diving in. Rolled down very quickly, and Maposhka's gonna get a couple of kills for his team. Both Radiant supports going down here. Navi overextending a bit there, really. Nice turnaround coming in from Empire. So, <laughs> Blizzy is probably dead, right? Maybe he kills Maiden. He's going to try. Okay, he wants to kill on the way out. Oh, oh he gets, he gets the, the crit. crit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our Phoenix goes, and he's like, I'm going to cast Icarus Dive. That costs 15% of his HP. And then he gets hit by a level 4 Shockwave and a level 4 Power Shot at the same time. It looked like he was trying to dive in an egg, and I'm just like, oh, he got deleted. He <laughs> just exploded. Okay. I, he bloodstone? <laughs> I think that's like 800 damage or something. When he dives into those two projectiles at once. Yeah. Kuman able to help keep himself alive with the healing water though. Does get sniped now by Sneeko, but doesn't die farming the Ancients, which is the important thing. Seiyu comes in, gets brought down, and fire. Be careful here, they're going to lose Maiden as well. They're kind of just walking in one by one. They may lose Chappy now on top of that. He's not really got an answer to the physical damage of Na'Vi, who are going to have a Desolated now on TA. Level 14 Templar Assassin, third on net worth, only 400 behind the Juggernaut, despite that laning stage. This is perhaps not quite what Empire were hoping for and expecting when they ran that dual lane mid. And when Empire's ever running these um, Magnus drafts, they, the game plays out very slow, and they're able to take advantage of... Um, like, I, I think Kuman is expecting he doesn't have to fight because there he has no Omni Slash, he just wants to take advantage of Empower and go hit some neutral creeps. And the rest of his team did want to try and take that fight. And I don't know who's right or wrong in that situation, but they do need to, to agree on a game plan here because they have both Magnus and uh, they have RP as well as Dragon Form. So it is possible for them to, to take a half decent engagement. They just need to bring their Juggernaut along if that's going to be the case. Yeah, even from this gold deficit, it does feel like, you know, and Power Jug is going to be able to do a lot in a fight. Has level 2 Omni Slash. Perhaps it's the Magnus Blink that they'll wait for before they really go for those kind of Team Smokes as Magnus is about to complete that in the bottom lane. Radiant side have some vision of what's going on here. I imagine Empire think they've dewarded Appy one more time. Just try camp. Uh oh. Oh no. Okay, with the diffuser. Okay, yeah, that guy will save his life. Going to be the kill they were hoping for. Yes. The fact that they don't even have to ever use overgrowth to kill him is such a problem. Just bonk some once with nature guys and crystallize thanks to uh, the extreme amount of damage he puts in as well as the diffuse blade. RP into Shackle Bottom. They'll bring down Brew, but they have to come in RP for it. It does feel fine because it leads into a tower. Issue is Brocham being claimed by Navi. Yeah, that's really smart by Navi. They should be playing the top part of the map with like their clinks and maybe even the TA anyway, simply because they can do Roshan so quickly. So it very much limits Empire. If they ever make a move to that bottom lane, they're gonna get punished by uh, NA just being given to magic. I like this. Clinks left the Roshan pit before they even killed it. So that Oracle probably thinks he's very safe there. He sees Rosh die and he's like, okay, then the Roshan pit. I've got Three to five seconds to, you know, get somewhere safer. But Clinks is already on top with the help of some good scouting. And Oracle goes down. They get Roshan. They get a kill. 
Tia gets further and further. Head level 16 now with what I believe was solo experience from killing Roshan. And they know there's nothing Empire can do to really fight or contest them because RP is still down for a full minute. Chappie's caught again. And he's oh trying to throw the shackle shot from Seiyu, but it doesn't latch onto crystallize to anything, so. Back in mid. He and saw the clings too. Terrible. Gone in. They've lost the Aegis already. The healing ward off in the trees does get Micro nice and to keep it alive here as the chase is on Kumin on the jug. Did use the Omni slash early in bottom lane so it doesn't have it available to him. Gets the spin back up, gets helped out by the Oracle. Egg is going to pop and catch Maiden here. Can they chase down the jug who's still pretty low? And Blizzy comes in later on. Phoenix with his spells refresh is going to get the Sunray out after the dive of the Fire Spirit. Everyone on Empire just melting here. See you on the high ground. Kept alive, Maelstrom procs. No, he dodges that one. He got hit by the one previously, but no follow-up proc as Empire. Buy back on Jug. Oh, that doesn't feel good. He's your most farmed hero who buys back, and it doesn't even turn into any kind of a, a play or a kill. And look at his item build. Going for Solar Crest. This was definitely not the Magnus pair-up hero. Because Juggernaut's yeah. always been very susceptible to just straight physical damage. So it's, I guess it's not terribly surprising that Kumin is ineffective in these team fights against Klinks and Templar Assassin. They, I guess they just were so in their head about the combination of it's an Empower hero and it's something that we can use to maybe beat TA in lane that they didn't really look at the later parts of the game where Juggernaut is going to be heavily countered by that, I guess. The Omni Slash is just, I feel like it's already, it's an underwhelming ulti to begin with, and this game against these heroes, it's even its even worse. There's Refraction, yeah. Brewmaster can just pop his ultimate, Klinks can Skeleton Walk, or he's just pretty tanky, the Living Armor. There's so much, so many ways to deal with Omni Slash that an already weak feeling ultimate just feels even worse. Tier 2 mid, now Tier 2 top. I don't anticipate Empire can really defend. All they can do is push the bottom tier two, maybe. Bounty, which my matriarch would yeah, that, it sounds kind of risky with Navi able to maybe rotate back and catch them, but That's or true. just go high ground. They will not probably do so if Empire there to defend, but we'll see Empire make that play. They're going to press out this bottom lane. Radiant Glyph being used, so they want to actually just press on. They see this jug bottom and they say, well, you keep going. We're going to force your TPs back. Yeah, they still have egg split as well as overgrowth. Those, their three to five positions are what represents all their team fight strength. So as long as those cooldowns are up, Navi can take any fight they want. I would say even one that extends into the uh, the enemy base, but they are going to play it safe, similar to the way that Empire did in the first game when they were so uh, dominant. Empire continued to struggle here, kind of trapped in their own base. 0 6 0 on Chappie's DK. Very rare bad game from him as he's just not been, had anywhere to farm. You know, normally, normally he dies three times, he's sitting somewhere in Viz. You no, know? he doesn't die six times. Yeah. Hey, I was just about to comment <laughs> the same thing. It's surprising to see him buying a Blink Dagger, not a Shadow Dagger. <laughs> because yeah. most Dragonites go Shadow Blink. And most Chappies go Shadow Amulet, so... Natural build-up. Natural build-up, natural synergy. Yeah. This is game one all over again, just... Shoes on the other foot. It really is. It's it's crazy how that that's kind of the state of this uh, tier 1.5 Europe slash CIS scene where it's day-to-day, -day, a different team can be on top, and game-to-game, -game, same thing. Like, Empire completely demolished game one. It wasn't even close, and that's what we're seeing here. Do you guys have these kind of like massively one sided games in, in Dream League? Uh, yeah, some days. It, it was day, like the first day of first two days of games, we had some really good games. Then we got to the playoffs, and the last day it was all stops. It was actually um, a pretty bad day of last games. Because normally that implies that um, like the drafting advantage, right? Like, yeah. dra like how important drafting is. Egg with the egg. Should go down here. Yep. Play Fury, but Kumin, he's kind of committed. He's going for the TP out. He will 
not be able to get out with the overgrowth being committed. We'll try and Omni Slash his way out. Is there any heals from the Oracle? He may actually get another kill thanks to the Oracle. He should still pay for this with his life. Does do so. Still looks fine for Na'Vi, although they do lose their supports. A nice escape from the Oracle. Wind Ranger also blinks out, so it's about as good as it gets for Empire, but it's a gold win for Navi, nonetheless. Even though it was a two for two, it's because of the support kills. Scythe of Ice for Crystallize, so he'll be able to kill even Seiyu. Nice uh, combination there. The Fusal Blade and the Templar Assassin Tramp. Pop by Magical. Help him get that kill. And they go go for the high ground. Yep. Maybe, like these key heroes are dead. Jug actually bought back last fight, so his respawn time is incredibly long. Blizzy gets brought in deep though, so he may actually go down here. Luckily, does have some help from Crystallize, but not enough. He does end up being brought down, so they should be able to hold off of that skewer into base from Miposhka. Great disarm from Maiden. I think he's got to do that every single team fight. Just use uh, Fate's Edict to be able to disarm the the Clinks or the Templar Assassin. Clinks out of mana as well, so he doesn't really have the best ability to sustain this push. But with the Sol Ring, he may just want to stay active and out on the map. So, catch up. Comeback time for Dire Empire. They've got Empower, they've got DK, Jug, farming with that extra Empower. And that's where this Solar Crest Jug build, you know, isn't as bad as it would normally look, I feel. Because you've got that damage bonus, you've got that cleave. You can go for much more defensive items that keep you alive. And against TA... Clinks, Solar Crest for the armor and evasion is pretty damn nice. Yeah, it's just unfortunate that uh, at the same time, Magical picks up the item that if you're winning, that's what you would want to have is Butterfly, right? That, I think that would be something you would rush pretty quickly and go like a Manta sort of Butterfly style for the Juggernaut. Uh, unfortunately, Solar Crest is going to be the poor man's version of that Magical. Yeah. He is hitting for over 300 damage a hit now. They smoked up. They went for these bounty runes. They're going to get there too late to get the runes, but they should be able to get some kills here. Miposhka gets the blink away and the skewer. They didn't damage him out of the invis, perhaps. Clink's going for the defusal instead of the right click. Even that could have been blink dodged as well. So hard hero to find and bring down as Navi immediately TP topped, knowing there's bounty runes still up there. So Nico going to try and make sure he grabs those. Without... um. Without Blink on Chu, I think you should spend a little bit of time farming. Without Blink on Chu, it is, they are lacking a lot of disables. Right, they like hard stunts. Anything to stop a TP scroll, because it's Brewmaster, Primal Split Out, and then it's Dream Protector. Those are the only two things you have. Chappie may just be dead here, he can't Blink right now. Yeah, it's the Sunray on top of him as well, he can't get this Blink out. That's a good setup from Chu, scouting with the Invis. You know, give it to Chu. Let him get that blink dagger, boys. That's the only thing stopping you. Is they yeah. just don't have that really clean initiation hard to disable. Well, looking very likely that we'll be headed to a game three here as Navi have a strong lead 26 minutes in, 13k gold lead. Poised to take high ground soon. Potentially just going to wait for the next Roshan. As they do play aggressive on the map, they are using these smokes trying to start some fights and get some kills. They're going to ignore the Juggernaut knowing he, they don't have a good way to, to deal with him. And Poshka, oh, the stun wasn't in time. It was mid-air and he TPs out of there. Perhaps if he had the Cyclone, Insta-Cyclone instead, but even that was going to be difficult. They still end up getting a couple kills. Seiyu, he dies, as does the Oracle. And to the high ground we go. They say, we don't need ages. We've got Deso Butterfly on our TA. We've got a Clinks. We're going to just break your buildings regardless. And even if they don't, they force this TA buyback. I'm sure they'd love to kill this tier 3 tower. It's got two health. Died to a soft breeze at this point. Yeah, go uh, go Icarus Dive. It's 2 HP. Icarus Dive right click. Even with Backdoor Protection, it'll die. How much does that reduce damage? Backdoor Protection. It like reduces damage and gives you a, a ton of healing. Over here, heals back to where it was. Yeah, I think it, I think it's just the the regen factor, right? Yeah. It also reduces damage. Back oh, oh, does it? I think. Does it not say Probably that? Probably right. Structure takes reduced damage and quickly regenerates yeah. any damage. I think it's like a so good how much fifty percent plus reduced damage. Yeah, it would it's, have to it's reduce very high. Yeah, you would have to reduce ninety eight percent damage. Yeah. To stop this phoenix from not being able to get the armor alone right. is fifty percent, but uh -huh. then you'd need yeah another. 
40, well, I guess, yeah, you need another 46% or something on top of that. I don't know. I actually don't know what the factor protection damage I'm on it, is. Boss. It's pretty high, I think. It Looking might be up. higher than 50. Like, as high as 75, even. Uh, protected illusion damage reduction. Wow, there's levels to this. So, illusion damage reduction is 75%. Okay. Unprotected illusion attack damage reduction is 60%. Mm. And regular damage reduction is 40%. Oh, it's only 40. Okay. And it doesn't... Haste. Yeah, you don't get bonus armor from backward protection. Just the damage. Straight up damage reduction. <laughs> Huh. I, I mean, there, there was a, there was illusion. Well, that's the change. That's not even directly related to backdoor protection necessarily. That was when they like nerfed all the TB Naga strats from being able to kill buildings so easily. Right. That was like the way they tried to address that. It was like, okay, you're gonna slow siege with illusions. We're gonna make it mega slow. Yeah, I just I, I just didn't realize that there was a protected. I damage reduction and an unprotected damage yeah. reduction. That's I had no idea as well. I thought I just assumed it was a straight reduction for illusions on buildings. Dota mechanics, you know, there's, there's stuff that gets changed two or three two or three years ago that you just sometimes forget or it just never comes into play. Oh they beat him! Okay, they skewer in the TA deep into the base. He's got the ages though. Egg is there too, you do not want to fight under this if you're Empire. And now Crystallize, he's found the DK, he's rooted up. Can Crystallize finish him off? He's taking a lot of damage here. He should still blow up, it's going to be close. Chappy, back in the fountain, I think he's going to heal himself. Oh my god, that was a sliver of health. He healing self. Oh, okay. Oh, Everything adding together, barely saving his life. The fountain regen, the healing self. He still only had a couple hundred health here, but it still looks like Empire are going to lose their base, even though they don't lose any heroes yet. Lizzie being on the slash here. Still alive though. RP is there. No skewer back. It's up, but he got instantly hexed. And Koshka may just go down here. DK's going to be buying back here. Blinks into the skewer, does Blizzy. Gets brought along for a ride here. Getting brought very low as well as Crystallize. Wants to go chasing. Still has a cheese in his hands. Doesn't have hex for a couple of seconds. One more right click. Maiden in trouble. Gets brought down by Magical. That's a triple kill for the TA. Magical is just cleaning up here, and they're going to GG out. Game over. Ooh, that was a rough game. It but at least both teams have experienced a stomp. So <laughs> we're on a very even ground going yeah. into game three. Yeah, it doesn't as much as like oh Navi stomp game two, they should have momentum going to game three, it's like, is it really that is that really the case? Yeah. It's like anyone can beat anyone. And I think that um draft has got to play a significant part into it. There was definitely some whatever ideas that Empire had about this game, they were either wrong or they weren't executed well enough. Whether it's like they thought the Jug Oracle would just stomp TA out of the lane entirely and he wouldn't be able to come back into it uh, and it would just have to like jungle his way back into the game or if they thought that Dragonite would actually be able to do better than he did against Train Protector Clinks, that was obviously a miscalculation as well. I don't think there's any way you allow your Dragonite to get that stomped. He was their last pick. At least their last pick. I don't know if it was the last pick of the entire draft. Fourth pick. Oh, fourth pick. Last pick Juggernaut. Okay. Because they picked it after they saw uh, Clinks. Yeah. And then TA got picked after huh. they picked DK. Okay. So D the TA was the like the tenth pick of the draft, I guess. Yeah. And, and Jug was right before that. And yeah, it struggled to have hey, he did okay. He was six two and zero, but it was more just the, the way all the lanes panned out. I don't think you can pin on any one pick, I guess. Yeah, probably one. I can see I'm why they, they couldn't do normal lanes. They couldn't do DK versus TA. TA would free farm, yes, but I think a big part of the problem would be that the Clink's aggro dual lane of Clink's tree would probably dumpster uh, Jug up there. Yeah. I don't think there was... I mean, that's Jug as a hero. It's like hard to find a place for him in the current meta. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we'll see any Jug in game number three, which is what is coming your way after a bit of a break. Navi, Empire, one of these teams eliminated from the We Play Reshuffle Madness. This is the lower bracket, so there's no second chances. It's do or die here in game number three. Stay tuned.